So I'm foam filling a mask, uh, kind of a poor man's way. Uh, most of the time you'd have an uncut mask right out of a mold, you'd pour AB foam into it, or I use my foam gun, boom, instant foam filled mask, super easy. But if, uh, if you don't have AB foam laying around, you need one right away, there's a cheap way to do it that you can get at the hardware store or even Walmart. Gorilla Glue. Really cool stuff. This bottle's about 20 bucks. So it's not the cheapest of glues, but for what it does, it's pretty amazing. I had to mistreat a mask. This mask has been laying around in my shop. Um, I don't normally use masks I didn't make because they're not thick enough. I mean, and a lot of times you can't see well, but I just like the shape of this one, so I kept it. But I kept it poorly so I could do this tutorial for you down the road. Uh, I'm going to take the tag off of it. Never been used, never been worn. And you can tell the face is a little misshapen just from general, just you know, laying on its side. I didn't take care of it. I did it on purpose. Normally I'd always stuff it with paper, put on a wig head. But here, what I'm doing is I'm going to take masking tape. All right, and I'm going to use masking tape inside of this mask just to help firm it up and help it keep its shape. Just so it's more effective, I'm going to double up the thickness of the masking tape just by putting one piece on top of another. The first couple pieces, I'm just doing a cross kind of inside of the top of the head just to help it keep its shape a little bit. That's it. Now see how it's not folding along this axis near as much as it would if there's no tape in there? That's kind of the whole principle of this beginning. All right, a little more tape. When you get the hang of this tape on tape, it'll go pretty quick. But you see how much stiffness that can add? That's just the two pieces of tape together. And I've already gone across. Now I'm going to go long ways. I'm just finding one point, and I'm just pushing that tape right up against the mask, which is going to make it stay true to its sculpture. Okay, now see the top of my head is already doming out a lot better than it used to. And this is just what it looks like on the inside. And I'll keep doing that until kind of the whole inside of the mask is covered. You can use a bucket like this to hold your mask upside down once your head will hold its own shape. Now it'll be easier. But make sure the bucket isn't warping it. All right, you can see now that I have a mask that holds its shape, you know, one heck of a lot better than it did. Opening my Gorilla Glue. And I'm gonna mix Gorilla Glue and water together. The ratio doesn't matter because I'm gonna have not all the Gorilla Glue is going to dissolve, so I'm just going to pour off the excess water when I'm done mixing. What you're trying to do is break up all the big clumps of Gorilla Glue that you see. Taking a big blob and I'm spreading it out. It 
and you can see how they're really not that combined but at least all of the glue is hydrated gonna set the camera here for a bit and let it go and uh, I'll speed this up and you can see the foam that it makes uh, this is kind of a first coat and then they'll do a second coat but I want you guys to see what's happening Alright, so you can see that the foam is rising now uh, inside of the mask and I'm going to paint in a little bit more, another layer, and once I get another layer uh, in, I want to get foam all the way around the inside so it holds it, and then I can just kind of dump a lot into the middle and let it rise up. So I'm going to paint all the edges now. Since this isn't 100% cured yet, but it gets you close to what the foam is going to be, all that foam was up on top. See the water, how I talked about pouring that off? That water can pour right back into the bottle. It hasn't reacted to with anything. But I have a very sticky foam right now until it cures all the way. All right, so uh, this time I heated up the water, uh, which did cause the reaction to go faster, and I was kind of getting more foam. So that's a good thing. Uh, I'm going to let this rise, and then I'll get back to it and see if I need how much more I need to add. So this is my mask now. Um, you can tell it's a heck of a lot more rigid. Um, it's you know it holds its own shape. It's a pretty much a foam-filled mask, but it's very hollow on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and just completely fill it for you guys. Um, normally I wouldn't have to. Once I have something in here that I can connect this head to, then I'm fine with, uh, with it. Um, I've also got a little bit of a pucker right here. I'm just going to pull that out when I, before I foam it. So I'm just going to you know, kind of reach in, peel all the foam away, get my finger in there, and I'll pop that piece out. Now it's a lot less severe than it was before, you know, because now it's free from the foam. I can pad it a little bit. 
just stuffing this cheek with some paper towel so that uh, it doesn't squish in. And that's just from how masks often are like that, just when they're shipped, you know, because they're so thin. If you're going to make a mask, bother to do it right and make them thick. You know, say, okay, now that's stuff that looks heck of a lot better on that side there. All right, but putting it back upside down in my bucket, mixing up a new batch of foam. And it's like mixing honey and water is kind of what it's like. Um, I have heated this water in the microwave so I can get a bit of a faster reaction from it. Just gonna mix this together. And every time it does kill your brush, and every time it does kill your uh, container. Go ahead and just add more glue to this water right here. And my goal for this is to use about half a bottle of glue on this so I don't spend more than $12 or $15 foam filling it. That's about what you'd spend on, you know, professional AB foam to foam fill a head. Depending upon, you know, what quantity you buy it in and whatnot. I have one of these foam, this is one of my brushes that I used last night, and you can just kind of see the foam on it, and what, you know, it's, it's a pretty firm foam, uh, where it cured in the open air, it has all these pockets and bubbles, but where it cured up against a mold, it's very smooth, you know, there's not a lot of voids in it, um, so you could even use this foam to reproduce things, like inside of a silicone mold, uh, I've done that before, um, <clears throat> it's really great stuff, especially if you don't have access to the, uh, you know, AB foam. Uh, but Gorilla Glue is pretty common. You can get anywhere. It's a little on the pricey side, but it's roughly the same as AB foam. So, a little harder to work with because of time. Uh, AB foam, you just mix AB, 50-50, mix, it starts kicking. This stuff takes a little while longer. I'm going to let this go and then I'll show you the uh, finished product. Okay, so I have the head here, um, and it's uh, foam filled, uh, it's just filled all the way up. It's nice and solid now. Um, it's a touch sticky because I haven't let this cure all the way, but it's really close. Um, and you can just tell, you know, now it's, it's solid. It's a solid foam filled head. I haven't distorted the shape of the mask. Um, this mask had a weird shape to begin with. It's very, I wouldn't want to put a human head in it. So that's kind of why I wanted to foam fill this one, but it's a good shape. Um, it's just very interesting. So, yeah, got this guy foam filled and uh, on the cheap and stuff you can get at a hardware store. So, go uh, foam fill some heads.